So you're wanting to know how much ISO affects your photos. Well, if you look around me, it affects videos pretty bad. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Chris Lockenbach and welcome to another episode of Learn Manual Photography. We're gonna be talking about your ISO and how much it affects your images. So if you're wondering why the intro had so much noise and why it looks so bad, was one, the ISO was over 20,000 on that and also I had bad lighting. ISO is essentially fake noise that's brought into your photo. Technically speaking, the higher the ISO, the more noise you're going to have in your photos. Now what's considered a high ISO? Now that completely depends on your camera and the sensor that's in it. This here is a Canon R5. It's got a 45 megapixel full frame sensor. The camera I'm recording with is a Canon R6. It's a full frame with a 20 megapixel sensor. Between those two full frame cameras, the 20 megapixel has less pixels to work with and there's going to be less noise in higher ISO situations. With a high megapixel, you are going to have more noise. You won't be able to put the ISO as high. So when people wanna know what the best camera is for night photography and someone says the Canon R5 or another camera that's over 45 megapixels, I'm gonna say you're wrong. Those cameras are great for wildlife and landscape photos because you can really crop into your image and use those high megapixels to its advantage. But when it comes to night photography or low light conditions, to me, the lower the megapixels between 12 and 20, maybe 30 at the most, and a full frame sensor, that'll give you the best options for night photography. Now this here is the Mavic 3. It has a 20 megapixel micro four third sensor. So in order of worst sensors to best sensors, micro four thirds is gonna be worse than a crop sensor and a crop sensor is going to be worse than a full frame sensor. There are a bunch of other sensors out there. I'm not gonna get into them. Just know that when you see micro four thirds, that's less than crop sensor and crop sensor is less than full frame. So technically speaking, this 20 megapixel Mavic 3 versus the 20 megapixel Canon R6 versus the 45 megapixel Canon R5. If you shot at 3200 ISO for all of them, the best looking image will be on the Canon R6, which I'm recording with. The second best would be on the Canon R5 and the worst at 3200 ISO would be on the Mavic 3. Noise will always show up the most in the shadows or the darkest parts of your images. So anytime you can introduce natural lighting to your photos or videos, you're going to have less looking noise. So 3200 ISO in a dark room versus 3200 ISO in a bright white room, it's going to look a lot better in the bright white room. Now noise in your photos versus high ISO is very photographer dependent on what they prefer. To me, I will shoot up to 4,000, maybe 6,400 for wildlife photos with the R6 and feel very comfortable about the noise that is in the images. While I have other friends that shoot similar settings, but they don't want to shoot over 2,000 ISO. They don't want the noise. In fact, some don't even want to shoot over 800 ISO. They think it's too much noise. Now with modern cameras and modern technology, you're not gonna notice ISO that much at 2000 ISO. And if you're asking, oh, if you have noise in your photos, why don't you just always shoot at 100 ISO? Well, you can't. And the reason is if you wanna have a proper looking image, some subjects just need to be photographed with higher ISOs because for wildlife, you may need a 1 3200th shutter speed to photograph a puffin or in astrophotography, you are gonna need a 4,000 ISO with a 10 second exposure if there's no moonlight going on. And if you shoot at 100 ISO f1.4, you're still going to need at least 45 seconds on your exposure to capture any kind of brightness in the stars. And those stars will not be sharp. They will have star trails. So there's one example you cannot use 100 ISO. I just wanna say that noise to me isn't the enemy. I don't mind it in a lot of my photos. The only time I will ever find noise to be the enemy is when you could have reduced your ISO and still maintained a proper image. So what I mean is if you're shooting landscape 
and let's say there's no moving subjects in your photo, right? And let's say your settings are 1 4,000th shutter, F22, and ISO 8000. Well, then I'm gonna judge you for having such high ISO because your other settings didn't need to be that extreme. You can reduce your ISO to 250 by reducing the shutter speed to 1 250th and open the aperture to F11. It comes down to a simple math equation. 1 4,000th is 8,000 ISO. 1 2,000th shutter is 4,000 ISO. 1 1,000th is 2,000 ISO. 1 500th becomes 1,000 ISO. 1 250th becomes 500 ISO. And then changing from F22 to F11 can get your ISO from 500 down to 250. On the other hand, ISO 8000 wouldn't be too bad if you're stuck with a lens that is an F11 and you're photographing puffins at 1 4,000th of a shutter. Well, now you have a high aperture. You don't want any motion blur on your puffins. And the only thing left is to raise your ISO. So you're gonna have some noise, but at least you have a sharp looking bird. If you wanted less noise, you're gonna have motion blur in your bird and then you might as well just throw the photo away because nobody wants to see a animal moving that is blurry. When I first began photography, I actually had a lot of issues with this. I look back at some of my old photos and I did exactly what I'm telling you not to do. I had 12,000 ISO because I shot at 1 4,000th on a bear that was just walking in the water. Getting out there and just doing the photography, getting home, looking on computer and saying, wow, this kind of looks a little noisy. What were my settings? Oh, okay. I needed the shutter speed to be here because I didn't want a blurry image. That's okay. The image is what it is. But you might say, oh, for some reason I shot that at f22 and my lens can go down to f8. So I'm going to fix that next time. The goal of this video is to just make sure that you understand what the basic general rule of thumb is when it comes to capturing your photos. So let me give you some photo examples and I'll explain why I chose ISO in each image. Okay, getting into some ISO examples, we got a few wildlife, a few night photos, and a landscape. This here is an arctic tern diving for some food and the ISO I used was 1600. I shot this at 500 millimeters f7.1 with a shutter speed of 1 3200. I used the Canon RF 100 to 500, which is why I was stuck at 7.1. These turns move very fast and 1 3200 is about the slowest shutter speed I can comfortably use where I feel like I can get everything sharpness and this one worked out pretty good. 1600 ISO on the Canon R5 is no issues because full frame mirrorless cameras these days can handle that with a breeze. Up next is this beautiful female cub. You can see her cub brothers in the background on this. She just made for a gorgeous photo. She had a little bit of blood on her nose but I just absolutely love the eye contact she gave me. She was a very shy female and I can't wait to see her in the summer this year. This with a Canon R5 when I rented the 400 f 2.8 lens. So this was shot in broad daylight, so I had a ISO of 200. I technically could have had 100 ISO, but anything under 800 ISO on the Canon R5 to me looks the same. If you want to say 800 has more noise than 400 and 400 has more noise than 200 and 200 has more noise than 100, or you can, but if you print this photo, if you sell it, no matter what, no one's ever gonna really care about the noise. Up next is this beautiful ptarmigan here in Nome, Alaska. I had a really great time in Nome with Sergius, Joey, and Herman. That was a really fun video that I recorded. But this shot here was actually around one o'clock in the morning. You could see the blue hour behind. There was just enough lighting to take wildlife photos with. The ISO on this image was 3200 shot at 500 millimeters with a Canon RF 100 to 500 so I'm stuck with f7.1 I actually tried shooting with a lower shutter speed and lower ISO but these little buggers kind of jolt their head pretty quick and I noticed some motion blur so what I did was just stuck with 1 640th and hope that it, it didn't fly because if it started to fly, it was going to be a little bit blurry. Okay, hey, moving on to some night photos. This here was the Northern Lights actually a few nights ago, right before New Year's. This was shot on December 30th. So it was a great way to end the year here in Kodiak. Probably the last time I saw clear skies. This was shot with my favorite lens for astrophotography, 
the Sigma 20mm f1.4. I've never used the Sigma 14mm f1.8. I've heard that's a very great lens. I got this lens because I wanted the f1.4 and I'm super happy with it. This was a somewhat bright Aurora, not as bright as you'd see up way north in Fairbanks, Alaska, but this was bright enough for me to shoot at ISO 1250 with a 2.5 second exposure. That is a pretty low ISO for night photos and that is a fairly fast shutter speed for the Northern Lights. I'd say most people shoot between four seconds to eight seconds and if the aurora is a little less vibrant they might even shoot at 15 to 20 seconds i really like comparing the f 1.4 lens with a faster shutter speed because when the aurora dances especially on the horizon like that you can see these vertical pillars going up and down and the faster your shutter speed the more detail you'll catch in those pillars so in my opinion this was the perfect northern lights moment for me just because being able to shoot under 2000 ISO is a very good night for me in astrophotography. Okay, we have another night photo here. You can see on the lower left the Kodiak Coast Guard base along with the moon set just going below Heitman Mountain. When the moon gets low on the horizon like that, you start to lose a lot of the brightness in the sky. So I was able to shoot a 30 second exposure with the ISO of 1600 and I shot this at f4 because I wanted a longer exposure with less blown out highlights and more focus throughout the photo. You can see I was able to capture foreground, the sky, the moon with limited blown out highlights. I could have technically gone and done another exposure to not make the moon and the Coast Guard base and the lights on top of the windmill so bright but i really enjoy how the photo came out so this was just another scenario where i was able to keep my iso under 2000 and it came out pretty good okay moving on to my final shot this here is one of my favorite landscape photos of the year i wouldn't say i'm the biggest explorer of the woodlands or forest but i was with a great friend and we decided to walk in the woods a little bit and i just found this beautiful lighting this beautiful bow in this tree and i was really happy with this photo i wanted the sunburst coming through the tree so i shot this with an f14 aperture at iso 160 19 millimeters and a shutter speed of 1 13th of a second i actually shot this handheld and 1 13th came out pretty good i was very happy with the sharpness at handheld of that shutter speed so you know the ibis and the canon r6 is doing a very good job all right i decided to show one more example because i didn't have a high iso example here so this you can see was shot at iso 5000 with the canon r5 which technically should have more noise. My settings were 5000 ISO, 15 millimeters, f2.8, and a 10 second exposure. And this is actually just the raw image here. And what I'm gonna do is I'll just bump up the exposure a little bit, and I'll just do a quick, very quick little, very quick little edit here. Let's just consider that edit. If you come down here in the shadows, you can see a heavy amount of noise one thing I noticed with the Canon R5 is when Lightroom enables profile corrections, if you disable it, you're gonna see your vignetting, but I found that if you now just make a mask, so let's just do a little quick mask here, and you increase just a little bit, there's still noise, but the banding is kinda gone. So that's just a quick tip if you see some kind of weird banding. I just wanted to show you what a 5000 ISO looks like with the Canon R5, especially when you raise the exposure. Look, I raised it 1.5, so that's quite a bit. You can see Andromeda here, and uh, doing in, I'm fairly happy with the noise in this photo, so I don't think 5000 ISO is the worst thing that you can do. To me, this is a usable image, I would post that and I would be pretty happy with it. That's not how, that wouldn't be my final edit. I'm just super excited that I can call the Canon R5 a usable camera in these kind of conditions shooting at 5000 ISO. Okay, thank you so much for watching the ISO episode on Learn Manual Photography. Next week, we're going to discuss how I choose all of the settings that I pick in every moment that I'm in. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.